Evening guys, I'm Dave Canterbury with Self Reliance Outfitters and the Pathfinder School. I'm sitting in a hotel tonight in Columbus, Ohio with my wife getting ready to leave for Japan for about 10 days. What I thought I would do, we're starting to do a lot more travel, starting to get a lot more experience with the whole travel thing and the nomadic lifestyle thing. And we're trying to kind of cut down on how much we carry type of thing. And I always have to take a roller bag with me if I'm teaching and I don't have tools available to me on site, like in Japan. I've got to take a roller bag of tools that I have to check in, and as long as those are under the plane, it's not a big deal. So, you know, axe, saw, knife, tarps, water bottles, typical 5C things go underneath the plane. And then really everything in my bag that I carry on my back is what I would live out of. It's my clothes, my toiletries, everything else that I would need in it from a non-teaching standpoint, as well as photography gear and things like that. And then if I don't have to teach or I've got access to that material, like when I go to Sweden, I can get that stuff because we have a campus in southern Sweden. I can leave stuff there. I don't have to travel with it. Then I can go to the one bag travel type option, which is just actually freeing to be able to not have to check luggage, not have to mess with all of that at check-in and just have that one bag on your back that you religiously live out of. So I've got a new backpack here, a new travel pack, the Air 2 travel backpack that I'm using. And I'll tell you right off the beginning of this video that I'm a die-hard GORUCK fan. Those bags are absolutely bomb-proof. Of course, you can't literally put a bomb inside them, but they are a bomb-proof military ballistic type material that holds up forever. You're never going to wear one out. They are costly, but they are worth it to me. I have a GR1, I have a GR2. The Air 2 travel backpack is about half the price or less of a GR2. It's made from a 1250, I believe it is, ballistic nylon. It's very, very heavy duty, and it's a good travel pack. It has more organization type thought into it for traveling than the GORUCK type bags that are really meant for carrying weight over distance and everything else is an afterthought because that's what they're designed for, rucking. This bag is designed for travel. So what I thought we'd do is we'd go through the features of this bag, what I've got packed in this bag for a two week stay in Japan, and kind of let you see the features of this bag. It's at about a $220 price point, I believe, on their website. So stay with me, I'll drag the bag over to a table and we'll get things unpacked, repacked, and talk through it. Okay guys, so let's get into it. Um, let's really quick just talk about the outside and then I'll kind of stand up, reposition the camera so we can look at the inside. So first of all, I've got this Moments lens pouch and basically what I did with that was because I'm not gonna access this at all while I'm traveling unless I'm filming somewhere, in which case I'll have the bag unpacked anyway. I've just got it stuffed right in the very top of this bag in this middle compartment that you really can't get into because of these side buckle straps we'll talk about in a minute. But just total transparency sake, I want you to know why that was laying here, because I got it out to film all this stuff today, all right? So that's where that goes. Now, one of the things that's really cool about this bag is this water bottle pocket. And this water bottle pocket holds a complete full-size Grail GeoPress, and I love that. It's got a D-ring up here on the top of the bag that they say was meant for kind of a shackle type device that like an identification tag. And that's what I've got on there. But I also have a carabiner just in case my bottle were to come out. I don't think it's going to. It's way more than three quarters away at the bottle. What I really like about this thing is when you pull the water bottle out, if you weren't carrying a water bottle, you basically zip that up and it becomes flat and kind of disappears from the bag altogether. And there's a really nice carry handle on the side of that bag right there. Of course, there's a bigger one on the top that's a lot more sturdy, but you also have this one here to grab onto, and you can still grab that even with your water bottle in there. The only thing that kind of gets in the way with that is if you've got your water bottle inside here and you want to undo the bag. But again, as far as undoing the bag goes, you're talking about undoing the center portion of this bag, which you're not even going to get into unless you're unpacking the bag anyway. So nothing gets in the way of getting this water bottle in and out while you're traveling, and that's important. On the other side of this thing, I've taken advantage of these cinch buckles, which we'll talk about in a minute, to put a raincoat on here. 
So I'll take those, I'll take that off real quick. And I just wad up a raincoat. So if I'm walking around between things in the airport, going to a taxi, whatever the case may be, and it starts pouring down rain, which it does quite a bit in Ohio and did quite a bit last year in Japan. I've got that option, just grab it off the side, throw it on. I don't even have to worry about opening the pack to get to it. All right, so we'll go ahead and take this water bottle back out of here now that you've seen that reloaded so that we can talk about the features of this pack. I'm going to reposition the camera and then we'll kind of get into it. All right, so let's get into this thing and kind of look at it close up. Looking at the top of this bag first, we talked about this heavy duty carry handle and I think that really is important because you're going to throw this bag around. You're going to grab it by this handle a lot to throw it up in luggage compartments, pull it out of luggage compartments, shove it under seats, pull it out of seats, shove it in taxis, put it in trunks, all those types of things. So this heavy duty handle to me is really, really important and I like that feature. Now it does have a pocket right here on the back side of the handle. It's like a quick access pocket that you can get to anytime you can get into the front of this bag pretty much. So if it's sitting under the seat or sitting in front of you or whatever, you can get into this pocket. And the only thing I've got in there is a charging cable for my iPhone and a set of earbuds. So if I'm on the plane, this will be the last two things I grab out. I shove it up in, in the top there in the luggage compartment and I grab those two things out and I'm ready. I've got my phone ready to be charged and I can watch movies on the plane. I'm good to go. The other thing on the outside of this pack that's really nice is it's got a big pocket here. Again, right on the outside of the pack, it's got a waterproof zipper on it so that you're not going to have to worry about something you have in here getting soaking wet if it starts to rain. But really, the only thing I've got in here is a book. What am I reading today? I'm reading The Walker's Guide to Outdoor Signs and Clues by Tristan Gooley. It's a very good book. He's got a couple books that are really good. I read these things over and over again just to refresh my memory. But that goes right in that very front pocket. Zip it up. It's easy to get to again as soon as I get on the plane and I want access to it. All right, so that kind of takes care of the outside, outside compartments. But you also have like a tech compartment here on the front side. Again, you can't get into the center of this pack without undoing these compression straps, but you can get into the very front tech pocket, which is set up to put all of your stuff in that you might need quick access to as well. It's a large compartment. It goes all the way down to the bottom. I've got a notebook in there. I've got a pair of Ray-Bans in there. I've got my anchor charging brick in there. I've got a sustainability plastic spoon fork knife in there. I have an extra charging cable in here and a charging adapter that will hold three USBs. I've got my compass in here that I'm going to teach with because you don't ever want to put one of these liquid filled compasses under the plane or you're asking for a bubble. So I always make sure those are with me in my carry on. And then there's plenty of other room in here to store things that you might want in here as well. This is just the basics of what I keep in this pouch. All right. So that gives you ready access to that. Even if you've got this thing underneath the plane seat, you can still access this tech pocket to get things out of here if you want to, which makes it really convenient. These zippers, you know, these are good YKK zippers. There's no reason to think you can't just jerk these things around if you need to. And they also, the improvement to this Air 2, one of the improvements was there's actually two lock eyes on these zippers so that you can lock all of these compartments separately if you want to with a TSA approved lock or lock of your choice if you're running around in a foreign country or something, you have to leave this in your hostel or whatever, you can lock everything up. That's pretty important too. So that gives us access to one other pocket on the outside, this bigger tech, what I call a tech pocket. It's got all of your technical stuff in it. Okay, so while we're still on the outside of this pack, a couple more things. You have a laptop compartment in the back of this that has that same waterproof zipper so you don't have to worry about your laptop getting wet in the rain all i've got in there is my ipad pro is all i've got in there okay but you can put a full size apple macbook pro in there no problem i'm sure that a 13 to 15 inch laptop would fit in there no problem whatsoever and again it's got those two locking zippers on it so if you want to lock that compartment you could do that while you're sitting in a coffee shop or whatever if you weren't using your Mac for work. Now, there's one other compartment on the bottom of this pack, 
and this compartment is not being used by me for its intention. What I've done with this pocket is I've used this pocket to put my air dop kit in. So I've got my full air dop kit right in the bottom of this thing, really easy to access from outside the pack. So if I'm on the plane or whatever on a long flight like Japan, China, Australia, I want to freshen myself up or go to the bathroom and brush my teeth or whatever, it's easy enough to do that. I can also keep things in here like melatonin, you know, something to put over my eyes so I can sleep on the plane. All those things can go in here and they're really easily accessible right here. What this pouch is actually meant for is to put in a pair of shoes so that your shoes don't touch the clothing inside if you're really that worried about it or if you have to carry extra shoes. I'm kind of a one shoe kind of guy. I wear one pair of shoes and that's the pair of shoes I wear for everything, whether it's going out to eat, teaching in the woods, whatever it is, I wear the one pair of shoes. But if you had to have dress shoes or something like that, you could put them in there. But I find that it is the perfect size. And I've never seen anyone else do this on some of the videos I've watched, but it's the perfect size for that air dock kit, which works really, really well. Now I guess while we're at it, since we're talking about air anyway, we might as well talk about this air dock kit real quick. To me, this thing, you know, this is a dop kit you could live out of. And I live out of it most of the time, actually. I don't unpack this stuff at home. I just live out of this dop kit. You know, shaver, razor kind of stuff in there, tooth powder, hair gel, uh, deodorant stuff. Things in the main compartment there, easy to access, easy to get to. You've got another compartment over here for things that you might need less often but or more often. I've got, you know, a brush in there and a comb, a toothbrush, and then a side pocket that's got... Some things in it like medicines and things like that as well as nail clippers those types of things that you might not need all the time and then you've got one access point here on the outside i keep a full package of wet wipes in there again remember that i'm working also in the woods so if it looks like i'm overpacked compared to some hippie nomad beach bum who's you know drinking pina coladas on the beach while he's traveling it's because i'm doing that but i'm also teaching at the same time so i have to be prepared for everything so anyway, that takes care of the Air Dop Kit. Another great example of a good product by Air. Now let's get into the main compartment of this pack. Right, let's get into the main compartment of this bad boy. Again, you can't get into this main compartment without undoing these compression straps. But I like that because it secures it better. It, can crank down to compress things when needed to make it a little bit less of a profile when you're carrying it. But it also, if you overstuff this thing and you had to check it for some reason, it just keeps your stuff more secure if the bag were to burst open for some reason. I could never see that happening with something this heavy duty, but it's possible, okay? We probably should talk real quick before we get into the inside about the straps. Um, I do have a set of hip straps on the inside of this pack that I'm gonna show you because I think they're really innovative. I don't have the hip straps on here because I don't want them dangling in the way of things when I'm trying to travel to the airport and negotiate, you know, putting my baggage up and down inside the plane, the cargo, and things like that. But if I were wearing this thing as a day pack once I emptied it, or I were wearing this thing as it is full on a truck somewhere between an airport and a hostel or a hotel or something like that, I may want to add those on there to get that weight off my shoulders if the bag was really overpacked. Honestly, this bag probably only weighs about 30 pounds. I ruck with more than that every day, so it doesn't feel that heavy to me. But I got the straps with me just to show you guys. Now, it also has a really innovative thing here. There's a strap right here that's made out of like seat belt webbing material. And what that's for is so that when you extend the handle of a roller bag, you can slide this over the handle and it will sit on top of your roller bag and you don't have to carry this bag through the airport at that point if you don't want to on your back. Very, very cool feature by air. I'm pretty impressed with that. All in all, these backpack straps are really comfortable. Comes with a full on uh, chest strap and everything on it that's standard with it. You don't have to buy that extra, pay any extra money for it. And when they sent me mine, it had the hip straps in the pack. I don't know for sure whether that is something you get normally or whether it's an add-on option, but I have them and I'm going to show them to you. I think I tucked them right here in the top, I did. I just tucked them right in the top of my bag here. So we will go ahead and show you how those work real fast before we open up 
the guts of this thing. So you've got two tabs here, all right? And it's contoured to sit on your hip. I really like that. So you can put it on right side up or upside down, depending on how you want to wear it. And maybe it's more comfortable you for, for you one way or the other. I don't think it really matters too much, to be honest with you, okay? I would probably wear it like this. So what you're gonna do is you're going to push this down, push this back at the same time, this lever, and it's very, very tight, which is a good thing because it's not gonna come undone because of that. So you push that back and push down, and it, there we go, and it comes undone, all right? And then you just slide it in here, just like this, and then do the same thing in reverse and lock it over the top, and you got your hip strap on there. When you wanna take the hip strap off, you just go reverse on it, and it's fairly, fairly easy to get off. It's not overly tough to do, all right? So that's worth looking at as well, in case you wanna use that hip strap option. Again, like I said, I just tucked them into the top side of this bag beside my Joby tripod in case I needed them for something. I said you couldn't get into this bag without undoing these side straps. You actually can get into one side of it if you've got your zipper set up right on the side like that. You can actually get into that area without having to undo these compression straps. So now, let's undo these bad boys. Undo the other side here and look at the main compartment of this pack because that's really, you know, that's where you're gonna put everything. That's where you're putting everything you're really living with. Everything else is just peripheral stuff you're using while you're traveling. This is what you're gonna live out of, okay? First of all, on the inside, you've got a mesh pocket here, a zipper pocket here. I don't even have anything in those pockets because there's just that much room in this bag. I don't need to put anything in there. But if you needed to, you could, all right? Again, the hip straps. A Joby tripod stashed on the side, just an easy stash point to put something extra in there. Again, we talked about I'm a GORUCK fan. I use two GORUCK packing cubes, and that's what I allow myself when I'm packing my bag. I can put as much stuff in these two cubes as I want. Once they're full, that's it. I can't take any more clothes. So let's talk about that, because really, once you take those out, the bag is now empty. That's it. You've got that quick access pocket there. The shoe pocket right there has got the dot kit in it. Other than that, and our tech stuff, now the pack is empty. And we're down to two packing cubes. And that's what we're living out of clothing-wise for the duration of our trip. Now, again, this may look like a lot to someone who is an ultralight traveler skipping around the globe in their sandals and shorts going to warm countries and not worrying about anything. But if you are teaching, you have to be prepared to not only do the hop on, hop off with your wife and take pictures and video and all that good stuff for social media, but you also have to be ready to go to the forest, to go to the woods and teach people. So you're going to need to not stink at both occasions. Now you can avert some of that stuff by wearing the right type of clothing. We'll talk about that as well. But you're still going to have to have some extra stuff than you would normally have to have. So what I do is I separate this very simply. The first and smaller of the two is generally undergarments and t-shirts. So I have two hemp t-shirts and a merino wool t-shirt, and I'm wearing a merino wool t-shirt. So I have four t-shirts, and because they're merino wool, they don't have to be washed and changed every single day. What I do is when I'm done wearing it for a couple, three days or whatever until I just get tired of wearing it and I think it's going to stink even whether it does or not, I just turn it inside out and I know which ones are dirty, which ones are clean. On the other side of this bag, we have socks and skivvies. I always go heavy on socks because if I'm going to be moving a lot, I'm going to want to change socks more than one time during the day if I'm on a long hike. And... Even though these are all merino wool socks, I like to change my socks a little more often than you actually probably need to just to make sure I take care of my feet. So I've got two thicker pair of hiking socks and four pairs of regular merino wool hiking socks and then two pairs of merino wool boxer briefs and a pair on. I'm also wearing, like I said, one of my merino wool t-shirts and I'm wearing a pair of black 501 jeans and you'll see in a minute, I only have one other pair of pants. 
Pants are the heaviest thing you can pack next to shoes. The more you can avoid those two items, the lighter your pack is going to be and the easier it's going to be to get what you need in there. So again, t-shirts, underwear, socks, done. Okay. The second one is where I put all of my other garments, whether it's layers, long sleeves, pants, all of those things go in this other bag. So on this side of that bag, we have one shirt exactly like the one I'm wearing now, which is a quick dry Helicon, one pair of Helicon pants. These are the pants I wear in the field. The black jeans are what I wear any other time. And then I have two Helicon ripstop shirts that are the same material weight as the trousers that I can also wear interchangeably with this one, depending on the weather, depending on whether I'm teaching or depending on whether I'm going out to dinner with my wife. But I would generally wear these lighter weight ones as much as possible, save the heavier ones for you know evenings and things like that, and only use them in the woods as a last resort if it were cold outside. And I didn't think I had enough layering material, which we're gonna talk about right now. Because the other side of this is nothing but things that I'm going to use to control my body's core temperature pretty much while I'm teaching and while I'm traveling. So we have a minus 33 degrees, basically long sleeve expedition weight shirt. That's my first base layer over top of a merino wool t-shirt. I have scrunched up in this bag, I have a puffy jacket, okay? This one happens to be a foul raven. It wouldn't matter what it was or what brand it was as long as it's a good, heavy-duty puff jacket that you can use as a layer. And again, this would kind of be like my final insulative layer over the top of my merino wool. And then my wind layer or my rain layer would be this camouflage anorak that I pulled off the pack in the very beginning. And I gotta tell you, this camouflage anorak really surprised me because this thing was 40 bucks-ish on Amazon. No name brand, it's called like Global or something like that. Um, there's actually one in my Amazon store. If you go to my Amazon store, you can see it. It comes in like camouflage and black. But this thing is one of the best rain anoraks I've ever used because it's very lightweight, it's very durable, and it's actually 100% waterproof. So yes, you're gonna sweat in the thing if you've got many layers underneath it, but if you're trying to keep warm, it's a great wind layer. If you're trying to keep dry, it's a great wind layer. I mean, great rain layer. So there you go. Other than that, a more Eve buff, a good merino wool buff to wear as a neck gaiter, a Helicon beanie, and I'm pretty good to go. I don't have any gloves in here. I don't generally worry too much about that. I can usually pull my sleeves over my hands if I have to, or I can wear a pair of socks on my hands in an emergency. But if I'm gonna be working outside in an environment that has lots of prickly pokey things, I generally will have a pair of gloves in my roller bag that has my equipment in it, and that's where my crude leather gloves are at right now. So I do have a pair of gloves with me if it were to get cold or if I need to get you know, down and dirty with some work. But this pretty much wraps up what goes in that bag. And you can see, looking at this bag, we'll pull this thing back out real fast. And you've already seen, you know, the air dop kit is here in the bottom, right here at the base. You've got a couple things in that stash quick access pocket. We really didn't pull anything else out. So we can shove this bigger GORUCK packing cube in, shove the smaller one in above it, just like this. All I did was tuck the compression straps in, or the uh, hip straps in, and I tucked my Joby tripod in. It really doesn't matter which side that's in. It's padded either way. Folded that thing over and zipped her down. And everything else is just the peripheral stuff that we already talked about being in the bag. So you can really put a ton of stuff in this bag. And there were compartments and nooks and crannies and pockets that I hadn't even used to put anything in. And this thing is still rock solid. And I just take this side here that doesn't have the water bottle pocket on it. I fold my anorak up so I can get to it on the fly if I need to. And tuck it right in right here. And just compression strap over that dude and cinch it down. Just 
like that. Come over to this other side and do the same thing. And probably a little bit neater job of that would be good, and I'll probably fix that a little better after the fact. But for the sake of the video, it's good enough for right now. And that thing is ready to go, ready to carry. Like I said, heavy duty material, great construction. I would say that the only bag that beats this thing out for construction and durability is probably the GORUCK GR2 or GR3. And again, you're talking at least double, if not more than double the price of this bag. So for the money that this bag costs and sells for, I don't see how you can possibly beat it if you're looking for a good option for a travel bag because that is the design intent of this bag. It's a one bag travel bag. Okay, so real quick, you can see how this thing carries. It's a 35 liter, 34 liter ish pack. I am five foot eight, seven, eight, somewhere in that neighborhood, 200 pounds. You can see how the pack rides on my body as far as how far it sticks out on both sides. I do have pretty wide shoulders, but it's a very comfortable pack for me to walk around in and the straps are super comfortable with weight in them. And again, probably only about 30 pounds right now, but it feels comfortable. I know I can walk a long distance in this pack. All right, guys, I'm Dave Canterbury with Self-Reliance Outfitters in the Pathfinder School. I appreciate you guys joining me here for this video today. Remember to hit the notification bell. Remember to hit the subscribe button if you're not already subscribed. If you feel inclined, visit my Amazon store or my selfrelianceoutfitters.com website that helps support me and my family and what we do. I appreciate your views. I appreciate your support. I thank you for everything you do for our school, for our family, for our business, for all of our sponsors, instructors, affiliates, and friends. And I'll be back with another video as soon as I can. Thanks, guys.